Florida, Gary, Indiana. AJ, A Dub, Marco, and Stretch. Keeping it forthright, vulnerable, and. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. Thank y'all for joining the program. We're happy to see you return. Fellas, how y'all doing this week? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Excited for the change in seasons. That should be, I guess we got a month, so never mind. <laughs> I mean, it was one of the things I, I, I stupidly got optimistic when we started hitting that 50 and 60 area more than one time. I was yeah. like, oh, did we get out of the weeds sooner than normal? No. <laughs> Four inches of snow. Deal with it. <laughs> right. And it was it was it was hard snow. Like it was it was. Yeah. I I felt I felt like I like some um like my my episode. I was on some episode of Comeback Pussy number whatever because I couldn't believe how hard I was getting hit in the face by these white substances. And uh, <laughs> but uh, um, speaking speaking of a uh, brace of whiteness, um. <laughs> um, I I gotta say, it's my, really hard my, not uh, to laugh at that. <laughs> no, 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 it's a joke. That's great. <laughs> um, I know y'all don't necessarily frequent TikTok as much as I do, uh, just because it be having some of the best comedy to me. That's not that. That's not stand up. And uh, 2024 so far has been the Gregorian year of sound bites <laughs> like no other. <laughs> we started out the year strong, was swallowed up, and I I just knew that was going to carry me over uh <laughs> for a while. Uh, y'all are both familiar with this uh this this clip of uh TD Jakes. No, that's, that's how I know. I don't I don't I don't I don't So <laughs> uh T D Jakes is in the middle of a sermon, uh, in the midst of all the stuff with um him and Diddy, uh, uh, like not even him and Diddy. Some chick got on the internet, lied on T D Jakes saying that uh he was messing with little boys at Diddy parties. And <laughs> <laughs> it turned into a whole thing before they figured out that homegirl was lying. And at the same time, a clip comes out of him talking about, you know, him being stuck in some place. And then he goes on like a tangent as preachers do, where he's like, have you ever been swallowed up? You ever been <laughs> swallowed? You ever been sw- have you ever been in a, in a time of swallowing? <laughs> Damn. Actually, that's how I've, I've actually heard that before. Now, now that you mentioned it, I actually have heard that. Okay, so that so that goes on for like a good few weeks. I thought that was going to, you know, just carry me over because of how hilarious that shit was. Then... <laughs> A TikTok page by the name of the Biracial Lounge. Yo, Ken Cole. Why is this this the first time I'm hearing of this? (laughs) (laughs) They post. Is that uh, what Marcus is right now? (laughs) That's that's what we we lost Marcus. So he got he got a contract deal. (laughs) And so uh, they post some poem by some chick whose name I did not bother to learn. Um. The name of the poem is Confessions of a Quadroon. What? what? <laughs> and uh, uh, just in case for the people out here who don't know what a quadroon is, uh, oh, uh, a quadroon I, is a person. I, I don't <laughs> you don't know what a so that that's one of the many racial slurs that uh the of categorization uh in the top of the construction construction of race. Where uh, Quadrum was a person who was fo- uh, a fourth black. Yeah. Uh, mm. So yo, one, of, one of your parents is white. The other parent is already ha- uh, a mixed race, half black, half white. And so when yeah. you're born, you're only a quarter black quadroon. Uh, okay. And if uh, uh, and if it's even less than the, uh, like the next version would be octoroon would yeah. be like if you're an eighth black. <laughs> it's it's so <laughs> excessive to. <laughs> Figure out how we can come up with a name for these scenarios, man. 
who is spending that much energy to come up with a name just to be like, I'm going to say something mean, but make it new. <laughs> you know? <laughs> What's Can't the new like what mean thing to say? <laughs> Mathematically <laughs> relevant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the whole quad and octo and math. I got to hit them go. hard this time. <laughs> The <laughs> word just ain't hitting like it used to. I gotta hit him hard this time. You know, like, what the fuck? And so, in this okay. poem, this chick has uh, primarily two lines that have been cracking me up, but one way more than the other. <laughs> the first one is, what do you do when you're three quarters master a massa one quarter coon and I'm like oh, God, we've, all, we've already started horrible here because first of all if you cared about your blackness in any kind of way no self respecting black person calls himself a coon because you yeah. would know the context of that so we're yeah. already starting off strong starting off strongly horrible the next one it's the thing that's been cracking me up whole time. And I'm going to say it exactly as it fucking sounds. And I will send it to y'all <laughs> so that you can hear it and you can know exactly. I'm not exaggerating the way I put this. <clears throat> Obama is a mulatto. That's the one drop rule. <laughs> so, is a mulatto? Uh, uh, so mulatto. A, a mulatto. mulatto. Uh, a mula I mulatto. thought you just put a spin on it or something. Yeah. Okay. So mulatto <laughs> being, you know, just biracial. Uh, yeah. Or really ain't just biracial. It's that you light skin or white passing. And yeah. so, yeah. Um, I've been like, I've, I've said that shit to myself by myself so many times just in my house. Just, Obama is a mulatto. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't tell you how, how I can tell you the, the comedy in which I find this shit that I I just I, I need to share that in this moment. <laughs> <laughs> well my uh my catch up is that I wish my week was that enthusiastic. <laughs> that exciting I wish <laughs> man that's, that that sounds great I need to I, I need to uh, be more in tune with, with the culture so <laughs> for real <laughs> but um, uh, so let, let's hop into the subject of the day uh, uh, money and motherfuckers who spend it very interestingly um, <laughs> I like that <laughs> Um, we all want to start. Y'all want to start with a um, uh, preacher who's clearly Satan, or um, uh, or a home dude who bought pretty much a um a stunt uh us. What's what I'm looking for? Uh, stunting in a black paper plane. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was so funny. Let's start. Oh. Go ahead, Alex. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, just because I like the way you uh, call homeboy out, let's go with the uh, <laughs> stunting in a black paper play. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we got a, uh, um, did you catch dude's name? I didn't see it in the video. I'm actually about to try to look it up right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, as you looked that up, uh, a guy spends $100,000. <laughs> On pretty much a single person drone that you can fly in person, uh, that you can fly in real time. So, um, like you're in, it has a full cockpit and everything like that. And so he said he did about 15 to 18 uh, simulation flights before he did the first full flight. And so we're seeing it. Uh, motherfucker got like eight propellers on it. Um, and it's pretty much. Shape it is shaped like a what, what what's the, what's the joint that holds women's uh birth control in it? I don't know what that's called? I'm afraid uh, not. It looks like yeah. a, an egg to me. Uh, like an egg. <laughs> it looks like an egg it, to me. Kind of, yeah. A weird looking egg. It, 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 it almost looks like a sideways apostrophe. Mm. Yeah, like in the in the bulb and like bend over situation. Or mm. like that, that seashell thing that's supposed to be like perfect math. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. I was about that to thing. say, I've, on, I've only seen them in like those circular, like that, like 
this is the way, like those circular packaging. It reminds me of the, the the wheel on shoots and ladders, or whatever that the little spinning wheel. <laughs> so you got three different images, people, for you to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Is it a wheel on shoots and ladders, or is it? How is loose? How I don't even remember. But. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> but oh, the anyways, game of life, my uh, bad. Whatever the case, continue. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's start out with uh if you had a hundred if you had a hundred grand to spend on anything, are you buying this? No. Uh, immediately that's an immediate no. What I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm a I, I would probably buy a, a house, honestly, like somewhere to live. I sure, um, but I guess I guess in the sense of like not just like you got a you got a hundred grand that's not gonna hurt you to spend. There's no uh, way that you don't already have whatever okay, house okay. you want, all that kind that's, of stuff. Okay, I still must, I'm still gonna say no, <laughs> but <laughs> like for me, like because like I know there's been like a lot of uh, like flying car talk over like the last like ten years. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's trying to you know make the a flying car, but I, I have no interest in in that because. I see that we. I see the way people drive, you know, regular cars. I'm like on land. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're supposed to trust people to be, and and I get it. I I get that most of the population are not going to be in flying cars just overnight. Like, oh, okay, mm. this is the new thing. So I I get that. But if the thing is though, just just because you have money, just because you can afford, you know, things, it doesn't make you somehow more capable mentally it, it just it just means you have more money it, it doesn't mean you're you make better decisions as far right. as driving and all that stuff so I, honestly i'm not even sure like if i if i was if my life was set up fine and i didn't have any concerns i don't i don't even know what i would spend a hundred thousand dollars on um maybe I, I really couldn't even tell you because if i my answer would probably be a boring answer like okay that's, that's not really fun but, but um yeah I, I wouldn't buy that car or plane or vessel <laughs> whatever you call it <laughs> hey, Dub, how about you? Are, you, are you are you dropping that are you dropping that 100 g's on on this for your own personal <laughs> thing well, that, first, my, my dude said he, uh... he's, he's spending what two he said two dollars uh oh, yeah. a mile <laughs> on electric power to fly this thing. Crazy. Yeah. Did it say how long? Um how it didn't long say it, how long you could operate have. it on like one charge or whatever. It didn't. Mm. I couldn't find his name either. So I'm gonna just call him Fly Guy for right now. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Great show. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it was uh, you know, right on the nail, if you will. But uh that's tough, man. Like the fact that I even have to like debate it. <laughs> knowing that I can't op- I don't know how to operate an airplane properly or anything that <laughs> flies with me in the cockpit <laughs> you know? the fact that I still gotta fucking decide like man but could I do it <laughs> you know how, re- how responsible could I be <laughs> you know like right. it's, the answer should be no the answer should be no <laughs> but you and, know. The, and, and the fact that it's 190 grand so it's closer to oh excuse me on it my bad. Which I makes it even worse. <laughs> yes, you know yes I mean? it does. <laughs> yeah, makes it even worse, even, man. Yeah, I was even thinking hundreds. That's, I feel like that's kind of low for what, what that is, but two. But that, yeah, that makes different. a little bit more sense, though. Anyway. You know what I would do? I would just go ahead and rent that shit from time to time. <laughs> you know? I would just, yeah. I mean, I know I'm kind of fucking up the question. I'm putting a loophole not, in there, but that's just what we not do. Necessarily, I would think like <laughs> It's already expensive just to have on, keep maintenance on, et cetera. I wonder yeah. if if it is even a better financial decision to rent it because I because I'm sure even in renting it, you gotta have it transported to you. It's not like you know, they just let you take it from the dock and then keep it for however long you like yeah. they gotta bring it to you and you gotta pay whatever uh like <laughs> renter's insurance on it and all of that. There's no yeah. telling like how much more. And especially I go, you had to buy the simulator too, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure like a naval base didn't let you just come in and go, like, hey, can I test this out for a little bit? You know, <laughs> now I'll make 
I'll make a donation, buy y'all a new boat. Like what? <laughs> yeah, I, wonder, you got- I wonder. I wonder if it comes with it. Like if there's some type of mm. software that I, mean, I would hope. Just so you learn, say that. you know. I don't have no clue, but I would hope that it would come with some type of training, blah, 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 blah. To, you like, know. nah, I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where you're like, yeah, well, like it's, you put it in like stationary practice mode, training mode, where you can still be in there and fucking around, but it won't move. And, you know, and then oh, and, yeah. That'd be cool. you hit the, just so you are comfortable, you're in the same seat that you're going to be in when you're yeah. flying it with the same control. And then you fuck around and hit the wrong button. You take that bitch out of. Uh, you know, pr- practice mode, and you run into your neighbor's, you know, driveway. Or something. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where I go like, even uh, simulation wise, because I remember a um, uh, flashback, fifth grade, Banneker, uh, uh, Washington D.C. trip. We went to a naval base and did like the 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 submarine and the flight simulators. Yeah, and oh, that's uh, dope. Uh, yeah. I remember being like. This is really interesting. At the same time, I would feel better if this moved because <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you telling me like I'm doing all the things right. I don't I can't really tell. One, I'm 10. And so and so who the fuck knows what I'm actually grasping. And two, like dude says, like you'll never nothing can prepare you for like the 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 power of that first takeoff. And I'm like, how do you even know what anything like went because you know the precautions of you know like safety measures that you have to do? How do you know you really gonna do that when you're plummeting to the earth at whatever G force you're going at? That you're still gonna be able to do the same things because you did in a non a non mobile simulator. That is true. Um, only few have done it. I feel like most people would probably you know crash and just accept that. Uh, it's time to call my loved. It's time to call. It's time to call my loved ones. But some people have been recorded on like it, it. You know, it was their third or fourth flight, and this is like crazy. How many times? You know, mm-hmm. in the in the um, ultimately, it's still a minuscule amount of times. But there have been a, enough times, a significant amount of times, where the instructor like passed out or was having like health mm-hmm. issues. So the person who's it was their third time flying or. Mm-hmm. Where they essentially wasn't ready based on the hours and experience to fly themselves, they had, was able they to figure it out. What was able to figure it out while while communicating with the um who are the people that you communicate with? What are their names? The uh, tower. Well, yeah, yeah, the tower. Yeah, the folks in the tower. Yeah, yeah. Uh, air air traffic control. There you go. Yeah, there we go. While like while communicating with them was able to land the fucking plane from thirty five hundred feet or whatever, which is mm-hmm. nuts. Yeah, you know, pro- pro- provided you have enough gas and everything to like do practice trips, but still, you could give me practice trips, and it's my third time being in the plane because I've been in it twice now. Give me practice trips, and I'm not sure that that's gonna work out good for anyone, anyone on the <laughs> ground or or me in the fucking <laughs> plane. But um, right. the point is, it's wild, but that shit, people do do that successfully, which is wild to me. I mean, it's great. I'm. I want to believe I could be that person. And then again, I also know like anytime um, uh, flight attendants are going through like the measures of like, hey, here's how to put on your mask and take care of yourself before the kids. I will look that baby dead in the face and go, you know, neither of us are making eye of this, right? As we're like plummeting to the ground. And, like, <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I, and the baby just goes, it like flicks your nose or something. Has yeah. no fucking idea what's going I on. I know idea what's going on like this. Like what? <laughs> If this plane goes down, we're not surviving. <laughs> yeah, that's a good chance that. You say what? No, I think, I was saying that's a good chance. That's that's true. <laughs> it's like now, here's a loophole, real quick. This particular um, aircraft or human-sized drone mm-hmm. apparently has a home button, where in case the pilot gets lost, it knows how to get back to its base or charging station, whatever, mm. just like a drone, like an actual, you know, a regular drone does on its own. If, if you got lost and you're plummeting or something failed, does that home button still work? Do we think? I mean, I would assume if the, if the, if the vehicle is going through whatever malfunction is going through, it's not going to be like this. Oh, well, let's just, 
make our way back and function properly. Like I would assume in those circumstances, no. Or when it hits that uh when it hits that low battery moment, or if the it sees that, you know, the driver has been idle for too long, then yeah, it's something like this goes in autopilot, returns home. But I assume everything still has to be working in order to go home. I agree. Cause yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Cause as a as an ex drone owner, Q being ex drone, my <laughs> drone never returned home after some malfunction. <laughs> so it's somewhere still in Miami, Florida. So <laughs> oh, shit. it was the prototype. Yeah, uh, it was the prototype <laughs> they used for this. <laughs> this <I guess> so. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that was a devastating moment. Cause like I, I had a drone that I, I used mm. to fly, whatever. And um I was in Miami. This is 2019. Mm -hmm. um it was i flew it over like the kind of like the bay area like over the water and stuff yeah and there was some malfunction which isn't uncommon in in a in a city area because there's a lot of like buildings and satellites and sometimes that'll mess with the you know the connection um it's not a big deal typically it'll just return home like when, when it does hit some type of you know whatever it'll just return home but this situation it didn't it just it, I, I don't know. I can't. I mean, it was five years ago at this point, so I'm kind of like I kind of forget some of the details. But all I know is that I lost connection, which again, that's not even uncommon. It's not a big deal when you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, it's no big deal. It'll come back. But I was like, okay, it's not coming back. It's not coming back. Now I don't see it anymore at all. So I was gonna say like it doesn't hold on to a GPS signal, or it only does while the battery is still alive. It, it it does, um, and I, it even I even had 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 video of I guess of its last moments, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but even then it still doesn't really help because like it could be on top of a building, it could be in the right. water. It's just like I don't know. So I I just I looked for you know where I thought it where mm-hmm. last said it was, mm-hmm. but again there are so many apartment buildings over there and. Mm-hmm gates that you got to get through and like i mean this thing could be anywhere so i look where right. i had access to but i gave they, up you know they had a camera on it yeah damn yeah. that's those, <laughs> those are the ones that i'd be like oh that's that's the one yeah. that's a hard loss yeah yo the yeah. drone like yo the drone was calling people over like yo 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 <laughs> adam, yo, yo call adam tell him i love him <laughs> <laughs> call my older man tell him i love him yo <laughs> <laughs> last will and testament of Johnny John. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a wild thing, man. Like I um if I had an outdoor pet, um it would be cool to have one of those. I don't I guess they have collars or they have it would be cool oh. to have a way to like have a GoPro like camera mm-hmm. on your animal to kind of see what they see, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they make thought, a little shit was cool. Yeah. <laughs> It was like, don't yeah. they don't they make like collar mounts for them? Yeah, especially when they're outside to see how far these motherfuckers are roaming. You know what right. they're getting into is like so interesting to me. <laughs> yeah, especially about it like a cat because you know they they'll disappear. <laughs> for real, I yeah. guess that's what you mean. So. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now on the so, other side of this coin of like, how would you spend the money? Do you have feelings toward people who are, um? Uh, highly affluent, uh, but it doesn't really add up as to why they are. Example, oh. <laughs> um, uh, Aaron, if you could look up dude's name because I don't have it. Uh, the televangelist that we're about uh, to talk yeah. about, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, uh, famous clip. It's maybe a year or two old now, or something like that. Uh, probably more than that. I have no concept of time, but. Uh, dude gets approached in a <laughs> in a, a a flight hangar, um, by a reporter woman. He's getting into his car, and she's like, you know, can you explain this uh private jet ownership and also the kind of mm-hmm. stuff because you're a televangelist. Pretty sure most of Jesus's things was kind of anti-capitalist, even though capitalism didn't exist yet. Capitalism didn't exist yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you explain as to why you're a preacher with a private jet or any of these other things, mansion, etc.? And he goes on a tangent with some of the most evil eyes anybody could ever have. And uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and one of the statements was, uh, 
uh, I had to buy the, this jet from Tyler Perry because he made it so cheap for me that I, you know, I it would be rude to not accept the offer. He is such a, he's he's just such a good guy. He gave <laughs> it to me so Tyler cheap. Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, well, yeah. this person, I would not be surprised if he would not spit on Tyler Perry if he was on fire. And so, <laughs> <laughs> um. So the guy's name well, we is Cat Kenneth. Williams, William. <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth I said, well, we know Cat Williams wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Monique. Yeah. Or Monique for that matter, right? Yeah. That dude like, uh, is, uh, what? His name is Kenneth Max Copeland. Kenneth Max Copeland, right? Yeah. And he ain't the only one. You know, Creflo Dollar is the same way. And uh, Joe. Uh, Joel Osteen, right. <laughs> yeah. Founder of the Eagle Mountain International Church. Yeah. Um, so she was pressing him on several things. Like, for the most right. part, essentially what like Josh was saying, you know, explain your wealth and do you think you need to be that wealthy? Do you think you need all these things? And, like, one thing I wasn't a huge fan of, I understood why she did it. It was like, my grandfathers were both Creatures and did a lot of good essentially, and they were both pretty much poor and had disdain for the, the wealthy, blah, blah, blah. I don't necessarily like that because it's like it doesn't, that part I, I didn't like because it doesn't, she's essentially saying from their view, you should be poor. When even Jesus said, you can't, um, one of the best ways to help the poor is to not be one of them. You know what I mean? He might have been meaning like morally and whatnot, but still, like to com mm. to compare is also not fair in that way. Essentially, saying one is right and one is wrong, blanket statement. Yeah, not I, a fan I, of that. I'm sure the I'm sure there's more nuance to it and all of that. And forgive me if For I'm sure. you off. No, that's no, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, like outside of that, <laughs> everything else, everything else. <laughs> Was just too funny. Those those eyes were too funny. And one of the things he kept evading was because one of the things she kept pressing him on, even like the most, mm -hmm. was apparently he had been he had been quoted in saying he doesn't like flying commercial anymore because he doesn't want to be in a tube full of demons. And he kept <laughs> evading. He kept like like demon souls or demon and like he kept evading that because that she kept pressing him and pressing him uh -huh. she's like okay so let's get back to the demon statement <laughs> you know what I mean? and he just yeah. really, he just didn't have much to say for it you i'm know, sure he, he didn't <laughs> <laughs> just like and at one point he stopped and pointed his finger out and said now, don't you <laughs> you so you call people demons and <clears throat> now i would never say that and i don't feel that way and you stop saying that. He just got so serious in those eyes, bro. It was a let that shit is pure comedy, man. Because he really is that way. You're con anyone who truly lives those characteristics <laughs> is hilarious to me. It was hard to not laugh whether I I was able to suspend whatever I feel about oh, yeah, one yeah, side yeah. or the other just because it's so fucking funny. Right. Funny um, is funny. I, I I gotta it's not necessarily pushback, but it's a thing of I guess my beef with very uh affluent preachers is going how is you being this affluent how does this make sense when most of your congregation is nowhere near this amount of wealth? And I don't get why you think because I because I remember Creflo Dollar being like, you know. My con uh, telling his congregation, y'all don't love me if you don't pay for my private jet. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And I'm paraphrasing, yeah. of course, but that was the sense. That was a sentiment expressed, and I'm going, "The fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, so, so for me, like I, like that level of you know greed and whatever whatever adjectives uh -huh. you want to use, it it doesn't match with the teachings, I guess, of, yeah, you know, of the Bible, like for me, like I'm, I'm, I'm not in church and, you know, like I was as a, as a, as a kid, as a youth, as a youth them. but I still remember 
basically everything. You know, you know, you don't yeah. lose twenty years of indoctrination. You just don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, but like if we're if we're basing you know the Bible's teachings, if we're, if you're basing it off of that, then you know a preacher owning a private jet, it do, it just doesn't match. <laughs> it just doesn't. Like now, a, a, a thing that a lot of people don't realize is that it, it isn't unusual, uncommon, or even uh, immoral for a, a pastor, preacher, evangelist, whatever, insert, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, it's not uncommon for them to make a living from the church. Oh, In no, fact, yeah, yeah. There, there's that, some, that, you know, pretty much that, yeah. yeah, there's, there's yeah. some priests, whatever, whatever, that live at the church. Mm-hmm. Um, like that's, so I'm not even, I'm not, I have no issues with that, but it can, it can be excessive. And even, and even if your church is, you know, lucky America's enough earth. to right. bring in millions of dollars every year or every, every month, even for some churches, um, it's still not, I still don't see a place where the pastor needs to be bringing in a seven figure salary. Even if your church is bringing in, you know, eight figures, 10 figures, right. pastors still don't need to be bringing in that much money. It's, there's no reason for it. Um, because you can be a pastor and be making one hundred fifty, even two hundred thousand dollars a year, and that's still excessive. But it's like, okay, whatever. You know, if your congregation is twenty thousand people, you're bringing in. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even know what type of numbers these churches bring in, but, uh, but if a pastor's making six figures, I don't have any problem with that. But it's like the private jets, the Rolls Royce, Bentleys, is like that. That's got no place, you know, in that in that world to me i completely concur with you and grant like i know these mega churches out here exist where you got hundreds upon thousands of members of your church and i go you're asking what was a bit uh, i think it was a biblical thing of uh 10 percent of a person's check mm-hmm. or income is supposed to go to the church Yep. those things, that money is supposed to go to whatever is necessary for the church and whatever programming, outreach, et cetera, the church has going on because churches are essentially nonprofits. Yep. And <clears throat> congregations usually do have a budget where they come together and they build a, uh, uh, not salary, what's the word I'm looking for? They, they, they build a job for the pastor to be able to lead and spread you know, the word and shit yeah yeah you know they lead they take care of uh organizing all of the organizations and within yeah, the, i mean they're the ceo basically of the it, of essentially that. yeah so I, I get i don't i don't i don't mind them making money whatsoever but no don't mind it just, at all on, but when you're making millions yeah <laughs> it doesn't and, add up <laughs> Like well be well beyond what is necessary for you to run your business. <laughs> yeah. And it's That's not it and it's, most of the time, it's not a business you started. It's a business that brought you in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. At least in at least in today's terms. Yeah. Some of these are churches that, you know, that like they they've grown and all that kind of stuff. But I know I grew up. And a uh, 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 shout out to um, St. John Baptist. <laughs> uh, but they had the building fund that whole time. <laughs> I, I, I didn't see not one change happen to that building. Now, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen pictures more recently, and apparently they did finally make some changes. I assure you, it wasn't from that building fund that they had my whole childhood. That was some yeah. later on renovations. <laughs> So like for me, like my, my church experiences was a lot different because my my grandfather actually started the church mm. that I went to for all those years. Nice. Uh, granted, you know he passed away early, early in, into my childhood, and there was you know another preacher there. Uh, um, may he rest in peace. But uh, mm-hmm. like it was, it was, it always. We, so I went to like a small church, and it wasn't one of those big, yeah. you know thousands or even hundreds of people you know we might have on, on like churches. the busiest yeah. you know mm-hmm. on, on like the busiest sunday there, there might be i don't know there might be like 75 people in there Lord. so so for me and the, and the fact that that was my upbringing in church when i do see like mega churches and i see pastors driving 
Bentleys. Or, it just throws me off because, like, I look at my upbringing in church and it was nothing like that. It was mm. super humble. You know, my my pastor worked a regular job because we didn't even like it wasn't even enough money for him to just be a preacher. <laughs> so he worked a regular job and still was a preacher, you know, and I don't even think he took any money from because we didn't have the money to they didn't generate the money for him to even really take anything. Right. So for me, if that's my view of, you know, how things are run. So seeing the mega churches has just always been a turnoff or like, or, or not even mega church, like, you know, no offense to anyone that might attend this church, but even, uh, and this is Christ. And this is a Christ, uh, mm-hmm. who just so happened to be right across the street from our church uh, back when it was on, on Ridge road, yeah, back yeah. when they were on Ridge road before we both moved basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would, and I, I don't know, like I've gone to embassies of Christ recently as in like, for like work, I did some like, uh, mm. photography with, with Paul cause he actually goes there. Right. Right. But that was back in like 2019, 2020. Mm-hmm. And just seeing it being in there, I was like, I don't know. It just, it's fine, but it's, it's just so different from, from what I'm used to. They had Fred Hammond was there for their, uh, anniversary, their church. So I'm like, Fred Hammond, like what? Like. And like I said, that's so different from my upbringing in church. Cause like yeah. Fred Hampton, would, well, Fred, I say Hampton, Fred Hampton would never <laughs> step foot into New Nazareth I, MD Fred. Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> well, Fred, I said MD, Fred, Fred, Fred Hampton but, wouldn't but, have stepped foot into the church. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. And the thing is, Fred Hammond has been coming to Northwest Indiana for years. Okay. Like, that has been the market. Because uh, I remember me, uh, Meech, uh, shout out to Demetrius. Um, and <laughs> little Meech, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, was it me, him, uh, uh, Chicky, Chicky was dating at the time, and her cousin, maybe some other people. We all went to go see Fred Hammond back in like sixth grade because he actually came to Hammond, and we mm-hmm. were like. Fred, like the whole, I remember the fly. It was like Fred Hammond in Hammond. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> and so we was out there, you know, singing No Weapon and all of that shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and look, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking churches that bring in a lot of money, that bring in Fred wow. Hammond or Kirk Frank or whoever, you know, whatever big right. names. I, I don't have any problem with that. It's just for me, it just makes me a little uncomfortable. Like. When all the money is flowing around, it makes me uncomfortable because I'm like, this, I don't believe this is necessarily what, you know, the Bible is, it means, you know, like what it's trying to do. But I get we're in 2024, it's a different era. And I get, um, and I, I and frankly, I don't really care because I'm not even in that world. So okay. I don't really care what people are doing. But um, I do know, like, when I was coming up in church and, you know, we would go, maybe we would visit another church and maybe they did things a little differently. Um, it's just something I would just take note of, but, uh, but yeah, I guess to, to wrap up my, my views on this, uh, ultimately I, I just like, I mean, it's greed. Like, and you see a pastor with a Bentley or Rose for it's a private jet. It, like to me, and we all know about the seven deadly sins, you know, greed mm-hmm. being one wow. of them. And it's like, I feel like that's the epitome of, of that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm, yeah. With, I'm with you. <laughs> I think the word of the day uh, for this topic is like excess like, or excessive, like Adam said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I would look at it the same way if someone who wasn't a pastor was spinning out, like spinning out or like wasn't wealthy and then got wealthy and people expect them to be different. You're just living the same shit out in a very lux- luxurious environment now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, um, sure. It should definitely like it should be separate from the quality, the quality of their. Uh, what, what what do the, the qual? I don't know. Is the quality of their preaching, the quality of whatever they're offering, whatever people are able to imbibe while being there, because they're supposed to be a conduit to God or something, right? Essentially, for folks yeah. to come and get the truth, air quotes the truth, whatever yeah. that truth is. Right. right. So that should be separate, I think. And because I'm I'm saying that just from this is just, I guess, my opinion based on little experience I had. And I've been in churches with I've been to a couple churches in Gary, one with James and then one other one. I can't remember. And then I've been to another church called the Family Christian Center in Griffin. 
Oh yeah, Griffith. I remember Griffith. FCC. Uh, so, so, yeah, <laughs> so I've seen seen both of them, and um, I remember being younger, like, and asking my aunt. I can't remember her answer now. I think she just kind of rolled her eyes, with like. <laughs> that I was like that pastor at the FCC has a Benz he had like a G wagon or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and she just kind of rolled her eyes and like I think Fred Hammond actually came to that one and saying, um, mm. like the it was it was not a I mean it wasn't no mega church but it was whatever oh. our equivalent Indiana or Northwest oh, Indiana was you know yeah. it's it's big but it wasn't twenty thousand people it might have been like a thousand or something you yeah. know what I mean <clears throat> um. But um, and then I've been to other churches, and I'm like, I, I remember going to James's church, and on my way there, thinking like, oh my god, I I love James, I love James. I know he's very <laughs> into, he's very religious. We feel yes, differently about this. Shout I out respect to it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I respect it. I just can't get on board in the same way that he is. I'm not zealous about it. I'm like. I'd rather have, I don't want to be feeling like I'm stuck and limited to just this lane. And I'm, I am mm-hmm. remember thinking, I remember thinking the thought, I'm glad my aunt never pushed any one way on me. You know, I get yeah. there and I think Marcus is there too, that for, for whatever reason, to, I think mm-hmm. he maybe went to the same church, whatever. And I had I a wonderful did. experience. I remember oh. crying and shit and just feeling like, feeling genuine relief after you know, I just, I remember feeling something genuine, whatever yeah. the, the best way to say it is I felt something genuine. That's, this is after going there being like, man, I'm going cause he's my homie and that's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Some, something's clearly working for him, but the shit probably ain't going to work for me. Mm. Happy he's in his lane, whatever. Balling my eyes out, bro. Mm. Wonderful. And then having the same experience in, in that mega church. And I remember also thinking like, these fucking still, the seats are moving. Like based on, I think it was like so, something blew water or something out to like if there was a scene in like the was play that a or whatever. Church? Like, it was some crazy. <laughs> I just remember like it was some mist or some spray. They have a church it's a wonderful world. Like yeah. <laughs> that's how, that literally you sounds like a four D church. Yeah, so I'm, just church like, right. I'm just like, wow, this is crazy. But then having that same like, at some point, there was some feeling of sincerity or genuine that made me that like push me move me to tears and and to to like different degrees i was like rolling my eyes at both of them like i don't know man i'm not really into this type of shit church in general but then you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i really do think it should the quality of it should be the, the the uh more of the focus than how much the motherfucker's making mm. yeah. but at the same time with excess i can't with the with the <laughs> It's harder also for me to believe that he cares about the quality of his church when he has a fucking private jet that he's buying. It's hard for me to to believe that he cares as much about the quality of the offering he's giving to his followers or whoever the people are, attendees, yeah. whoever. Now, when now this motherfucker thing. is focused on a private jet, and I know his excuse was... I need to be able to get around faster. The same as shit that celebrities would say, like, yes. I can't, I have to be able to get from place to place. I have to be able to get from place to place and touch this many people with my word and my truth, blah, blah, blah. I understand what he's saying, but it's just hard for me to believe the quality isn't being affected by that focus on that much wealth. You right. got to be able to yeah. separate the two as a pastor if you're going to do that. So I'm with y'all, you know, all in all, I'm with y'all, man. It's hard for me to believe that my man is really pushing the the good word <laughs> with yeah. a fucking private jet. It's really hard, man. And and he got a fucking sale. He got a sale on it. Like <laughs> so he, his 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 truth and his word was that good that Tyler Perry was like, you know what, man, I'm gonna hook you up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Well, if y'all got any feelings on this out there, please let us know. You be like, man, I go to a mega church, and that's the that's the that's the quickest way to God is because you know we're standing on all this money, and so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. And, uh, if you got them feelings, please write us at informally honest at podcast at gmail dot com. Um, and you know how to hit us on all our social medias. You can always DM us and formally honest everywhere except uh, 
Twitter, as in formerly underscore HP. Fellas, any last thoughts before we get out of here? Yes, I do have one last thought. I, I, I forgot to mention the fact that he never explained the demons in a tube line. <laughs> <laughs> we still need an explanation was, for that. He wasn't going to. <laughs> he wasn't going Demon to. Because he, because he said the quiet part out loud is what happened. <laughs> Literally, that right there should have been my response. That says enough that this motherfucker ain't standing on business. He ain't standing. He, he's not standing on his business for the people. <laughs> he's not standing. He's not standing on his business for the people. <laughs> Demons in a tube is his reason why he can't do commercial. That says enough. Get this motherfucker out. Come on, man. Get yes. this motherfucker out of this career. Because I assure you, he believes that the de- the poorest are demons. They just <laughs> they, they, yeah. they little money leeches trying to take his take his wealth away from him. Wild, but, uh, wild statement, man. AJ, you got anything for we go? I do. It's it's gonna be based on Aaron's statement, and it's like if that dude was really about that Christ life, he would <laughs> have no issues with being on a tube full of demons because that would give him the perfect opportunity to maybe change one of those people's lives. Jesus notoriously hung out with criminals and, and people that weren't of, you know, mm-hmm. the right thing, notoriously. So the whole idea of, you know, him wanting to be away from people that aren't, you know, in his mind, following Christ like he is, is just BS. So. Absolutely. Those are my last words. (laughs) Amen, bro. Amen to that. Two things I'll say. uh, (laughs) One, on this subject of, you know, being Christ-like and all of that, um, it was a box office flop for having a (laughs) all-black cast, but go watch Book of Clarence because it actually was good. Okay. Book of Clarence. Is that recent? Yeah, very. Like, very, very recent. (laughs) Like, I don't... (laughs) It's not on streaming services yet. That's how recent it is. Okay. Um, or it's only on Prime, but you've got to, like, pay for it. Um, okay. Gotcha. But, yeah, Lakeith Stanfield plays this dude named Clarence. You got a, a home dude from uh, Rap Shit and Power Rangers uh, in there. Uh, Tiana Taylor plays Mary Magdalene. Uh, okay. uh Some other people in there. Um, uh, James McAvoy is playing um, um, uh, Pops oh. Pilot. Okay. okay, I know what this is. Huh? Yeah, uh, but it was it was very good um, and a fun time and all of that. Um, uh, that was first thing. Go go watch that out, everybody out there. Just because it was it was it was unjustly a a box office flop. And um, yo yo, really quick before you say the second thing. Yeah, if we could only get Tiana Taylor to play a singer again and come out with another album. That would be great. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's it. I'm sure she's working on it. And uh, last thing, Obama is a mulatto. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, we love title, y'all. We son. appreciate. We got our title. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you. And you know, um, I meant to look up more c words, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> every connection that you have, every uh, companion that you choose to uh, create and copulate with, we encourage, empower, and employ you to always be forthright, keep it vulnerable, and do your giggity goddamn best to please be honest. We love you. Peace. It's a Formerly Honest Podcast, y'all. Peace, Peace world. Thanks for listening. Show. <laughs> <laughs> Four brothers from the Miller neighborhood of Gary, Indiana. Indiana, Indiana. Four brothers from the Miller neighborhood of Gary, Indiana.